everyone welcome to another episode of deep matters this week's episode as always is going to be very engaging and interesting and today's topic is on cyber crime yeah and i'm nancy your host on the show before we continue let's take a quick break we'll be right back Welcome back everyone, talking about cybercrime. Cybercrime has become a very challenging issue in our society. And to help me to address this particular challenging issue, I have two wonderful personalities in the show today. I have Mr. Chidi, who is a tech expert. Mr. Chidi, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And I ha also have a lawyer, Mr. Pasco, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Chidi, I'm, I'm going to start it from you. Mm -hmm. um, from your professional point of view, as a tech expert, what can you say is the term cyber? Okay, cyber is a very big word. Uh, cyber simply means um, the activity uh, in the internet and also the activity you can do with your computer. Now, when we talk about cyber crime, uh, cyber crime means when you're doing anything illegal over the internet, when you're doing anything that is against the law okay. with, with your computer too. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Mr. Pascal, now as a lawyer, from your own professional point of view, what would you say is the term crime? Well, crime is anything prohibited by the law. Okay. Any action or inaction prohibited by the law is known as crime. Now, when it comes to cyber crime, cyber crime is any action or inaction which you commit over the internet. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Chidi, what are the types of cyber crime we have? Okay, we have um, child pornography, type mm -hmm. of cyber crime. Uh, we have um, document theft, okay. also in cyber crime. We also have um, 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 resources theft, what I mean, mm -hmm. people hacking into people's system, collecting their documents okay. without their, their, them being aware of it. And the child pornography, people putting child pornography, children below the age of 18, putting up their new picture. The internet is also a cyber crime. So, um, a lot of things, this one is okay for now. Do you have anything you could add on the types no. of cyber crime? Uh, coming to after child pornography, you have something like um, revenge porn. Okay. Yeah, you have um, cyber fraud, trying to extort money from someone through and you have government. cyber stalking, trying to, you know, take up emails that doesn't belong to you, maybe to any government agency to any, or anything. There are a lot of them. Okay, uh, um, Mr. Chidi, mm -hmm. um, you were mentioned of computer. Is computer the only device used for cyber crime? No, computer is not the only device. Well, no, I'm using computer here as a general uh, uh, word. You know, I'm, I'm, when I say computer, I'm talking about your mobile phone. Okay. You know, I'm talking about your iPad. I'm talking about any, uh, any device that can, you can use to connect to the internet, that's what I mean by computer. So any of these things can be used as a, a, a tool for cyber crime. Okay. Okay, Mr. Pascal, what are the things that promote cyber crime? Well, there are a lot of things. Everybody with his or her own intention. One, the most popular amongst um, every other reason is fraud, um, greed, sorry, yeah. greed. People want to get rich quicker, faster. Second is revenge. No, um, for um, revenge pornography. Third is um, some people want to blackmail others. Wow. Like if you want to stalk his mail, you want to gather get information, you want to use it and blackmail him. These are the three identifiable major reasons why people involved in cyber crime. Oh, Mr. Chidi, do you have anything to add to what Yes, yes I'll just add two more things. Uh, you can also talk of poverty. Yes. You know, poverty and when that the person, well, poverty is a big word, when the person mm -hmm. Is not uh, doesn't have um, self uh, 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 what would I say now self control. It can lead the person to cyber crime. And another thing, though, this one sounds funny, is some people do it for fun. Wow. Yes. Some some guys that are there hacking people's email, they don't they are not gaining anything from it. They just do it for, for the fun of it. Yes. So though it's it's funny, but it's also part of it. Uh, Mr. Pascal, are there agencies? Um, out there that combat cybercrime? Of course, there are. Um, 
there are. Um, in, the, in the United States, for example, we have Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation, that's the FBI, which released, or which normally yearly releases um, statistics on cyber crimes. Now, in Nigeria, through the Cyber Crime Act 2016, you have the Office of the National Security Advisor, you have the police, you have um, also the Interpol, the, that's International Police, which tries to investigate crimes connect, um, committed on the internet. So these are agencies that are involved. We also have, for example, crimes that are committed through bankers in the banks. So the banks are also charged to report. So they also act as a check to other um, to offenses committed over the internet in the bank. Uh, um, um, Mr. Chidi, um, you may mention of poverty. Apart from poverty, uh, poverty, is there another reason why Nigeria is on top of the list of cyber crimes? Is Nigeria really on top of the list of cyber crime? Everyone talks about it. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, Nigeria has been blackmailed for that because you know, uh, whenever someone commits, you know, they always have a way of bringing it down it's to Nigeria. Nigeria. It's not as if Nigerian guys are not bad, but we've been blacklisted. <laughs> so it's not as if Nigeria is top of the list. The other countries that are doing um, horrible things on that aspect, but outside them um, poverty. Um, I would say um, um, the, the, the government have a, a, a role to play. Why, why am I saying this? The government is somehow um, um, not checkmating this down to the persons. It's just like, let's talk about IP now. In Nigeria now, when you're browsing from a, a location, I think the only identified IP is Lagos. What do I mean by Lagos? You're browsing with our service providers. But when you take the IP, it will show in Lagos. Now, with those things, you, you can't really tell where this guy is coming from if you're not a techie person. And I want to that most times, the guys that, do, that engage themselves into these things, they have a way of changing their IP addresses. Wow. So it's also difficult to get them in the place. But I know governments can do more work. Governments can you know, bring out a, a, a policies. Governments can bring out more uh, professionals that will look into this individual. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Pascal, uh, from what you have said about Nigeria uh, being blackmailed into uh, being on top of the list of, of cyber crime, do you really agree to what you have said? Well, I, I, are being blackmailed I, into I, I don't agree with him. Wow. Uh, from the statistics released in, in November last year, 2016, Nigeria is poor behind USA and UK. Okay. And, um, we have 7.25 percent of people who are involved in cyber crime. It's not, it's not, um, it's not surprising. Why? Why? The poverty rate here is high, and then when you check the end point, the end point is to get money. And when you check the dollar rate, the exchange rate, you know, when people, when these people succeed in getting this money and they try to change the money here, it's huge money. So it encourages others. Funny enough, it encourages others. So if you are not blackmailed, I am not surprised that we are on top of that list. We are the first African country. But so that should tell you that if we should channel our energy into something more positive, I think our economy will be somewhere there too. Do you agree with me? Yes, I do agree with you. Um, I, I'm now um, being a lawyer, um, are there penalties or punishments given to people found guilty of cybercrime? Yes, there are penalties um, uh, um, to, um, prescribed for under um, the Cybercrime Act 2015. One, if you are found, first of all, there are a lot of offenses under the cybercrime now. If you open a cyber cafe and then you do register it to the CAC, the does the Corporate Affairs Commission and the NCS and the other relevant authorities, you are to yeah, you can be found guilty of cybercrime. If you now, if you are found, you doing cyber stalking, that's trying to stalk other person's mail, government's mail, try to obtain information that is not yours. You have five years imprisonment, you have seven, either five years imprisonment for government, then seven years for private individuals. Now, if you're involved in internet fraud, that's for the one that that takes, that you obtain money. Yeah, you have seven, you have an offense of no more than 10 years, and then a fine of about seven million naira. So there, those things are there, the laws are there. You know, if through the internet you also kill someone, you you have you you will be you'll be sentenced to life imprisonment. You know, and if you commit great uh, grave bodily harm, you you I think 
14 years imprisonment. So all those laws are there. But the truth is, uh, how are we using it? Exactly. Who and who are, is complaining? Who are you complaining? Am I complaining? Are we are people are not complaining. People, when you hack their email, all they do is to change their password, <laughs> and life goes on. It's, it's a normal story yes. along the street. So that the law is that the agencies who have been empowered to combat it have been given every instrument to combat it. The punishment has been provided for. All you need to do is to go and report and then it can be followed up okay you've heard it all from my guests before we continue to take a quick break and when we return we'll be looking into causes of cyber crime stay tuned back everyone we are still on the topic cyber crime and we will now be looking into the effect of cyber crime on the society now mr chidi what can you say are the effects cyber crime have in our society okay um cyber crime have a lot of effects in our society um one of them is death now cyber crime causes a lot of death in society how because when someone's information that is not supposed to go out to the public is being made known to the public if the person is not careful, the person can commit suicide. Cyber crime can also uh, uh, affect the economy because governments spend a lot of money, a lot of resources, you know, getting expertise to look at all what is happening on the internet. So it also reduces productivity. You know, the time government is supposed to channel in other uh, issues, governments keep using the time to look at what people are doing on the internet. And thank God for the Nigerian government today, even the military. They are doing a good work in regards to that, which you and I know that you can't just come on social yeah. media and make. <laughs> so you can imagine the ministry now, instead of doing the, the major work of saving life and property, they are now looking at what you and I are doing, are doing on the planet. Okay. Um, Mr. Pascal, do you have anything to add based on the effect cyber can have in our society? Yeah, um, it depends your country. Um, black on the world stage like if you go to the internet now and type cyber crime or you, you will see nigeria there <laughs> immediately you know so and then um, like you said money when it come, government spends money the federal government just earlier this year released said that they used 127 billion naira to fight cyber crime last year 127 billion you know what that thing can do in your <laughs> life and my life so that's the thing that, those those are the things, um, those are the first. Or another thing, it can cut short the life of anybody who is caught in the process. You are, in, you are into it and then um, you have a bad day. Sorry for you. Your destiny, your future, everything. So those are the negative effects of cybercrime. I don't think there's anything positive in it. Um, Mr. Chidi, you may mention on the, on the federal government doing one or two things to crop the um, cybercrime in our society. Are there other ways in which the federal government can effectively crop and combat Cybercrime in our society? Yes, there are a lot of ways, like I said initially, about what the Nigerian military is doing at the moment. Um, but, um, they can also go for that by getting the real people. You know, most times, the people the media show are not always the right people. So, how do you think they can really get these real people? Um, there are a lot of ways. There are a lot of ways they can get them. They can I wouldn't ask government to start sniffing on people, asking people, show me your laptop, because that is what the security, that is what they normally do. When you're walking on the street with a laptop, they call you, they open it. I wouldn't ask them to do that. But I'll, um, I'll think, I think they need to get more expertise, you know, get more hands, you know, because they can't do everything. To so get people that really know this job. What am I trying to say? Um, let's talk about ethical hacking now. Ethical hacking is professional. You have a black hack. The black hats, we have the white hats. Now, who are the black cats? They are the bad guys. Why the white one and the good guys? Now, government can get these white guys. There are a lot of guys in Nigeria that are doing this thing today not because yes. they want to do it, but either there is no job opportunity for them and somebody is giving them more money to do it. So they, will, they go for the money because exactly. everybody is hungry. Everybody so if money. government can look out for these people, these good guys, and bring them, you know, it's just like giving a thief a meat. To keep the secure. So, if government can get these people, okay, like I know of the United States, when they get they, they, they get somebody that is very bad at bad at hacking, they employ the, they person. Employ the person. Now, you can imagine if Nigerian government will say, okay, 
will go out. Okay, these guys are doing this thing. They are doing it in the wrong way. Okay, let's take them so that they will do it in the right way. It will be promising. Mm -hmm. Hacking and cyber. Well, should I say cyber crime? Let me say hacking now will be promising in the sense that you know that I'm doing this thing for the government and not for the negative. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Pascal, as Mr. Shidi was explaining more on uh, um, the way other ways governments could help to combat um, cyber crime, you were smiling. So that means you have something to say. So tell us. Yes, I have something to say. Everybody needs a job in Nigeria, and people are not satisfied. Saying that when you catch someone and then um, you, the federal government should employ the person and make um, positive use of the person. I I don't know, but from my professional point of view, that would be letting a thief go. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, that would yes. be encouraging. Everybody will now get involved and they will now want the and government, the government to, to catch them and then employ them. So I don't believe that's the way forward. The way forward is um, to eradicate poverty. Once you eradicate poverty, all these things are, people are not happy. So people are not proud that they are doing it. So if you eradicate poverty, if you create employment, people will see, have a way out. If you empower the youth, yeah. So those are the practical aspects. Those are the practical things. And then he made mention of the IP address something yes. earlier on. If you can be able to, you know, try and fix it, so that if someone is in a way and you're, you're locating the person, you locate that the person is in a way. If somebody is in a bar, you locate that the person is in a bar. Not having a central IP address of Lagos and Abuja only. Those are the practical ways the government can use, you know, to fight. Okay. Actually, I, I wasn't trying to make uh, the, the wasn't trying to make it something uh, good. I'm not trying to say it's a good thing to do. But what I'm saying is this: when the governments apprehend these guys and take them to the prison, you and I know that they just go there to serve their prison time, and they come back to the society. So they come back either being more back to the society, or they come back being good and the probability of being more bad is more so what i'm saying is that these guys if governments if uh, uh, the legal you know how you do your things you take them to court and you charge them if they are serving after serving government should take them back and get them handy you know because they need to get their hand dirty again so that they can put in because this thing they are doing is is intellectual knowledge yeah. so that they can use it for the right use because if they come back to the society again and nobody is checkmating on them, most times they go back. Because if you visited the prison before, you see some people that have served like three times. And you've been here before. What happened again? You see it's the same story. You keep because coming, they back keep coming back over again. That's, that's, that's what I'm the saying. Law, the, the, that's cyber crime law. Yeah. in such a way that if you have been prosecuted and convicted before and you served your jail term, by coming back again, you have a longer jail term. But they, you, you find out they still come back again. But that is, that is by the way. Another thing is, you keep saying about Nigerians, Nigerians. Nigerians, we are not the bad guys. You know, you, you know it pains me most times when I hear my fellow Nigerian, my fellow Africa saying that we are, the, we are not the bad guys. Forget statistics. You know, he, 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 okay, let's use um, this state as, as an example now. When hard. you go to the streets of Owele and you meet any young man or young man doing bad things, when you ask them which school, there's always one school they call. <laughs> which school is that? I wouldn't involve myself. They will, no, no, no. They always say IMSU. <laughs> yeah, but when you find out very well, you will discover that this person is not even a student yeah. in Imo State University. Yeah. But they're using IMSU, they've given it that name it's somehow. So they keep using the name always. So what I'm trying to say is that all these people, like the statistics is wonderful, but Nigerians are not the bad guys. Um, Mr. Pascal, um, after everything we have um, discussed based on um, Nigeria being the, the, the people that we are like, being blackmailed for cyber crime and we are on top of the list and all that, how can we, either the society or individual, how can we protect ourselves from this process? Knowing the fact that, I'm going to share a very personal story here, um, a friend of mine, she was actually duped of her money via email and all that, and now she's broke, she doesn't have money. So we need to find a way for each and every one of us to protect ourselves, the society at large, to protect ourselves from this foster. So how do you think this can be achieved? Well, um, one, you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful of what you click with your computer, what you click with your phone, because some of them, they come as a virus. And once you click, yeah. click it, they still 
your this thing and then start asking for password, paying money to this account so that this thing. So you have to be very careful. You have to read the instructions very well. You have to be less greedy. Some come as business partners and then they dupe you. You have to be. Um, the, the truth is you have to be just very careful, just be very careful, be moderate, be, do your things and then be careful, be security conscious. And Mr. Chidi, do you have anything to add to the presentation? Okay, I'll, I'll talk about, um, um, our, we need to be very careful in terms of uh, our devices, the way we use our devices. Um, example is that when you're using a device and you want to do, let's say, a transfer, you want to do um, online banking, and online banking apps, sorry, and you're on the open Wi-Fi, it's not advisable to use Wi-Fi to do such transactions. You better do it with your mom, your normal um, internet subscribers because you don't know who is on the same network with you. And we need to change our password, our email okay. password, yes, at least if it's once in six months or once in three months is very important. And when you're using passwords, don't use passwords that can be easily guessed. Like if your name is Nancy, I'll think of your name, your phone number, you know, your house address, your pet name, you know, all those things. It can someone can easily guess them. And another thing is that most times there are some applications you don't need in your phone. You don't need the applications, but then you're there. If we just keep downloading, just keep downloading, downloading things. Oh. If you don't need an application in your phone, Take it out. Take it out. Another is this: when you receive emails from somebody you don't know, and there's a file to download, why are you downloading it? Because most times, like what you said, most times those files they are just viruses. What the sender is just trying to do is to get your details. Once you run those, you click on it, it downloads. You see a normal page or a normal document, but the virus is running under your system. So anything you're doing in your system, your information can easily go back to the sender. So we need to be careful and we need to be self-content with what we have. You know, most times these mails, we receive it on daily basis. Somebody is sending you mail that money, you have one billion USD in so, so, so bank, that you are the next to king, stuff like that. You know, we see the mails. So you're from Nigeria. Somebody is telling you from Mexico that you are next to king. What is the relationship? <laughs> Why not go and take your DNA and be sure that see? I have somebody there. So, yeah. you know, due to the greed, you see us Doing falling that. into victim. <laughs> and most times they, they ask you, okay, let me just talk, sorry, um, let me just talk about the, the, the normal phone ones now. You receive a call and somebody is telling you that you have, a, there is a job opening, you need to supply things, yeah. you need to pay one million to your account. Okay, now pay 100,000. And you know, all those things, they, they sound rosy, but you need to ask yourself, just listen to yourself. Do I apply any job in social so, so, so we need to be careful. I know that there is hunger everywhere, but we need to be very, very, very careful. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, you have come to the end of today's episode of Deep Matters. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Mr. Chidi. Thank you, Mr. Pascal, for coming on my show. Thank you very much. You've heard it all from them. You have to be content with everything that you have. Don't be too greedy. And please, be very careful out there. With everything, whatever you're dealing with, business, relationship-wise, everything, be very careful out there. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page for more interesting videos. And follow us on all our social media platforms and please to join in the conversation don't forget to use the hashtag um, deep matters thank you to meet next time it's goodbye <laughs>